Improving traffic safety and operations is our main goal. However, traffic collisions still occur. Leaders from academia, industry, and government are working together to accelerate the deployment of Advanced ITS, or Intelligent Transportation System, a type of communication technology to tackle this global challenge. We will explain V2X, or Vehicle to Everything, as a typical ITS for safety. ITS communications have two major categories. Direct communication for vehicles and infrastructure systems, called V2X, and V2N, where signals are communicated through telecommunication networks. V2N is used to connect vehicles and has been used for many years. Direct V2X communication is suitable for collision avoidance and automated driving. While network-based V2N is good for sending large amounts of data to broad areas. DSRC, Dedicated Short Range Communication, is a V2X technology specifically developed for transportation safety applications. An appropriate mix of these two different technologies, V2X and V2N, is a good approach for ITS communication. This mix is sometimes called hybrid communication and has already been applied to vehicle and infrastructure systems around the world. DSRC technology for safety is developed based on well-established, stable Wi-Fi technology. There are recent proposals to use cellular technology for direct V2X communication. There may be some confusion about DSRC and cellular V2X. Here are some things to know. In the United States, Europe, and Japan, DSRC is deployed as the only mature and proven technology for direct V2X communication because DSRC technology was developed specifically to satisfy transportation safety purposes by experts around the world. The US, Europe, and Japan all have slogans for reducing traffic accidents, with the goal of no deaths or serious injuries. Through collaboration, DSRC technologies have already been validated for and deployed in real-world use in Japan, the United States, and Europe. Approximately 9,200 RSUs, or roadside units, have already been installed in the United States by USDOT and State Departments of Transportation as of July 2020, and 12,400 units in total will be installed soon. Numbers of roadside units and infrastructure are progressing steadily in each region of the United States, Europe, and Japan. DSRC is a well-established and proven technology. Its stability is a key factor for vehicles and transportation systems due to its long history and promises of future success and evolution. A misinterpretation of this stability is that it is an obsolete technology. But again, this stability is an important factor for transportation systems. DSRC is also designed to evolve into its next generation technology properly named NGV, or Next Generation V2X. Experts are developing this next generation of technology now under IEEE. Since NGV is an evolution of DSRC, it is designed to assure interoperability, coexistence, and backward compatibility with DSRC. NGV does not require spectrum separate from DSRC. DSRC already has a well-established ecosystem and it will be further enhanced to evolve with NGV. By contrast, there is no interoperability, same-channel coexistence, or backward compatibility between LTE V2X and Futures NR V2X. NR V2X requires a separate spectrum from the LTE V2X. That is the reason why only DSRC and NGV have an evolution path with interoperability, same-channel coexistence, and backward compatibility. 
DSRC has already been implemented in Japan, Europe, and the United States. While in China, the government and private sectors are moving toward the introduction of another technology, often called Cellular V2X. But it is LTE V2X PC5 based on 3GPP Release 14. A number of pilot projects are underway in China to deploy LTE V2X and V2N applications for infotainment. V2N using a cellular technology has a good possibility for infotainment because it enables transportation authorities to monocle vehicles in a broad area to improve traffic operations. V2N, by definition, requires the use of commercial cellular networks by carriers. To start with, LTE is a voice and data communication technology. Following on from 3G and 4G, we are now starting to welcome in 5G, which features high capacity, ultra high speeds, substantial connectivity capability, and low latency. However, it needs a dedicated infrastructure that will require enormous cost and time to build out. And the fact is that cellular networks employ base stations as translation devices between generations, but Direct V2X has no such translation device. As such, places with 5G connections are limited in the early deployment phase. Various advertisements questioning whether cellular communication technology can be used for V2X are causing confusion. Adopting technology for phones that are replaced on average every two to three years differs from the adopted technology for the life cycle of vehicles, which is approximately 12 to 15 years in the US, Europe, and Japan. Established, reliable, and proven technology is necessary for cars where safety is paramount. 3GPP Release 14 specifies direct V2X communication technology based on LTE technology. However, since the US standard SAE J3161-1 which defines the minimum requirements for V2V basic safety messages transmission has not yet been determined. Release 14 LTE V2X technology has not been fully tested in various scenarios and aspects, such as scalability in congested scenarios for V2X safety communications. Release 16 specifies a new radio access technology for direct V2X based on 5G technology referred to as new radio. The Release 16 standard was completed in June 2020. Release 17 will enhance 5G NR V2X technology. 5G NR V2X will require further standards for analysis, evaluation, and vehicle safety before it can be used on the road. For safe driving, what are the technical requirements being sought for V2X communications? One of the difficulties with V2X is that you don't know which car will need to send specific information, nor who will need to receive that information. For this reason, it's necessary to adopt technology that will allow each car to broadcast its location and speed at regular intervals and also allow nearby cars to reliably receive that information. Let's see why DSRC is more reliable than LTE V2X. DSRC utilizes a CSMA with CA technology. Randomly, the vehicle first confirms that no other car is transmitting before sending out data. With this mechanism, typically only one car occupies the channel at a time. Thus, all surrounding vehicles are able to receive the transmission. As long as each car periodically carries out these random transmissions, the communications are achieved. DSRC is a mature technology that satisfies the V2X requirements. On the other hand, 
With LTE V2X PC5, the time resources are divided into 1 millisecond subframes. The frequency resources are divided into 10 subchannels. These are the resource units that cars use to communicate. Each car checks the usage status of the resource for the most recent one second and then randomly selects one of the resources that is in the bottom 20% of power consumption to communicate. The resource selected by each car is used every 100 milliseconds. After a resource is selected, the transmitter doesn't check to see if anyone else is transmitting before starting to transmit. The resource usage is known as semi-persistent scheduling. LTE V2X differs from DSRC in that it allows simultaneous communication among multiple cars using different subchannels, each of which repeatedly uses its same selected resource. Due to these differences, this may result in several issues. The first issue is the persistent packet collision problem. If multiple cars select the same resource, communications using that resource will repeatedly collide. The second issue is the persistent half-duplex problem. When multiple cars transmit simultaneously, even if different subchannels are used, they will not be able to hear each other while transmitting. The more subchannels that are set, the more likely it is that this issue will occur. The third issue is the persistent near-far problem. In the situation noted above, according to the positional relationship of the receiving vehicle, the strength of the signal from a nearby car will be too strong, meaning that there is a possibility it will not be able to hear the transmission from a car that is farther away. Because of these issues, LTE V2X can be unreliable due to the persistent packet loss. To combat this, packets are usually duplicated and sent twice. As a result, LTE V2X requires twice as much bandwidth as DSRC or NGV. So when traffic is congested, there is a risk that this will further exacerbate the issue. For LTE V2X PC5 to mature as a V2X communication technology, it will need to prove that communication in difficult circumstances can be established. We hope that our discussion of these topics has left you better informed about V2X technologies. Intelligent Transportation System Communication Technologies will enhance both the safety and the efficiency of our transportation systems. Through the continued expansion of deployed DSRC V2X technologies in Japan, Europe, and the United States, as well as continued allocation of already allocated, dedicated V2X spectrum, our transportation systems will become safer and smarter while using our transportation resources more efficiently. DSRC V2X technologies have been expanding for our ultimate safety goals. <laughs>